When was your first time? Crying in front of a movie, I mean, what did you think I was talking about? Anyway, do you remember? Me, it took me totally by surprise. We were going to the movies with my class, I was 15, and sitting there, surrounded by my friends, reaching the end of the movie, it just started and I just couldn't stop. It really was weird, you know, my, my friends were sitting next to me and, and when you're 15, you really don't want to be crying like a wimp watching a film. So I was desperately trying to dry my eyes, you know, without being seen, but I don't know what happened. The floodgates had just opened and I just couldn't stop. I cried my heart out. It was such a weird and overwhelming experience. And that film was, well, let's see if you can guess it. If I say, oh, captain, my captain, you say, of course, Dead Poet Society, 1989, the legendary Robin Williams and a young Ethan Hawke. Oh, captain, my captain. Gentlemen. <laughs> that film is still, to this day, one of my favorite ever. That was the first time I cried watching a movie. Since then, it has happened <laughs> a lot. It seems actually these days, it, it happens all the time. Uh, you can even put me in front of a Pixar film and I'll just start tear jerking. Last time I really cried, like, you know, big tears rolling down my cheeks was when, oh, um, spoiler alert, I guess. It was when Tony Stark died in Avengers Endgame. And I am Iron Man. I still can't believe I, I cried for Robert Tony Jr. Anyway, so what happens there? What happens in our brain? Why do we cry watching movies? So in a prior video, we talked about theory of mind, right? Our capacity to read mental states of others, understand what these others are thinking and looking at the world from their perspective. And I explicitly explained how this has nothing to do with empathy as theory of mind uh, is about a purely theoretical, disembodied interpretation of other people's mental states. What's happening here is different, and it's fascinating. You see, when we do or feel something, certain areas in our brain light up. They get activated. Now, when we observe someone else do or feel something, and we're not, we're merely observing, well, those very same areas in our brain will light up as well, as if we were doing or feeling that exact same activity, except we're not. It's as if our brain acted like a mirror for whatever we're observing happening to others. That's where the term mirror neurons originally comes from. Well, actually, we now know these are not just some individual neurons spread throughout the brain, but represent an actual full-blown mirror neuron system spanning across brain regions involved with processing effective motor and somatosensory information. This is not about understanding rationally someone else's point of view. This mirror neuron system is way more advanced than that, or at least way more powerful, because it makes us capable of simulating in our body some kind of vanilla version uh, of what we observe is happening to others. This embodied simulation is really something. We're activating the premotor and parietal cortex, meaning that we're stimulating the observed movement. We're activating also the somatosensory cortex, meaning we're simulating touch and sensations, including pain. And last but not least is of course the activation of our limbic brain with the full range of our emotions, from happiness to disgust over anger, fear, and of course, sadness. So why are we capable of that? Well, researchers have deducted two main reasons why evolution has left us with this amazing cap uh, capacity for embodied simulation, as they call it. The first reason has to do with us being social beings. So I repeat this over and over again. Before anything else, we are social and emotional beings. These mirror neurons and embodied simulation made us better capable at connecting with others and thus live together as a group, as a community. If I can feel your pain and emotions, I'm more likely to help you if you need help. And so together, we have a better chance at surviving if we work together, right? Make sense? Now, the other reason, or at least evolutionary advantage, that came out of developing this mirror neuron system was from a learning perspective. If I see someone else getting in trouble for doing something and I feel the other person's pain, I'm way less likely to repeat that action. 
um, I don't know, you, you see someone fetching some water at a pond and they're getting eaten by a crocodile. You don't need to get attacked yourself by a crocodile to understand that's not a good situation to be in, right? And reinforcing that learning experience through an embodied simulation where you get to experience a vanilla version of that crocodile attack makes sure you'll be extra careful next time you get to fetch some water. Now, let's take that uh, rationale even further, because how often do we get to see someone else being eaten alive, right? Not that often. But now you run back to your village and start telling in gruesome detail what you saw. And this becomes a learning experience for the whole village, where the others didn't even have to watch what happened to learn from it. If you give enough gory details and start acting out some of the action, the other villagers as well will get an embodied simulation of, ha what, of what happened there. And they will become way more likely to learn from it as well. And yes, this is the origin of storytelling. Warning others of dangers to come. It all comes down to survival and improving our chances of making it through another day. It's why we're drawn to horror stories, their origins, our cautionary tales. And it's the mirror neuron system which makes sure that we get the message. We feel the pain in our body. We suffer together with the protagonist. And yes, we cry. We cry our heart out when we're 15 and we watch some kids climb on their desk and say, Oh, Captain! My Captain! Okay, so now your turn. What was your first time you cried in front of a movie? Do you remember? What movie was it? Share in the comments below. And yes, make sure to go to brainacademy.com. That's where the real action is happening. Brain out.